Hi, my name is Ina Satir. Um, I'm a Sudanese artist living in Toronto. I was contacted by the Hub Sudan to you know, introduce myself, answer a few questions. So this is what I'm going to do today. Um, tell us about yourself, introduce yourself. Uh, honestly, I never really know how to answer these questions, like how do I sum myself in a way that is more interesting. Um, as I said, I'm a Sudanese artist. I moved to Toronto um, three to four years ago. Uh, so I, when I moved here, I was uh, fortunate enough to win a Toronto Art Grant between a newcomer artist, who is myself, and that allowed me to work with a Canadian artist uh, who turned out like she's an amazing ceramicist, she's an amazing woman, and she gave me like the clay bug. I, she loves clay, and working with her, I started to love clay too. And um, now I'm considering doing clay full time. Uh, a lot of people also, um, whoever is familiar a little bit with my work, are familiar with more digital illustrations. With right now, I am not sure. I I'm in a weird stage uh, or in a weird place with my digital work right now, uh, which I might uh, talk about when I answer some of the few questions. Um, okay, so what is a typical day like for you? To be honest, I just feel like this is a little bit of a barrier question. Like, I don't, I don't think it's interesting for someone to know. Well, I wake up at this time, I eat at this time. This is what I eat. This is what I do. Um, so yeah, I think I'm gonna skip on this one. Uh, third question: Have you drawn inspiration from other women? Uh, tell us about someone who has inspired you. Okay, first of all, I'm in the studio, so I am gonna be smoothing my my ceramics as I'm talking to you. You know, multitasking. I'm not very good in talking and working at the same time, so just in case. Um, that didn't go, the plan that doesn't go well. Um, so have I drawn inspiration from other women? I don't, like you draw, um, you can find inspiration everywhere. Like inspiration from uh, men, women, children, uh, you know, plants, the universe, everything. So it's not, and, and, it's, and it's not something that's very specific to artists. It's something that can, ha like anybody can be inspired by anything. It doesn't matter what you do, it could be a writer, it could be someone who does any kind of creative work. Um, even if it's not labeled as creative work, you can seek inspiration from anything, basically. Uh, but answer this question, yes, I do have a lot of female artists. Even though I don't like the term female artist, um, I can explain this is another, in another 30 minutes, but uh, you know, long story short is that I just feel when you say female artist or black artist or something like that, it, it, it gives me a little bit of the insinuation as if you are talking about them because you're females, because they're females. But if you ask me who are the artists in general, black, white, orange, female, male, owl, wherever, I'm probably gonna have similar answers as well. So my favorite artists um, who happen to be female and you know, Sudanese are my sister, Ala Sater. Um, probably, I'm quite sure you are familiar with her work. Uh, her work is very light and amazing and because she's my little sister, so I could I saw the whole progress and it's it just an amazing thing to watch. Um, in As um, Ismail, we collaborated together on Dominance and working with her has been, what I, for me, what I, the project that made me realize that oh maybe I can be an artist you know before that I was like oh I don't know what I'm doing you know at the time I was an architect which seems like a lifetime ago Inas is one of those artists that is he, she's a true artist you know she everything she does is just so different and so unique and she's just amazing I truly I'm truly happy that I actually did the project with her um, another artist is Dan Naim I love her work she's a Spanish Sudanese artist I love her uh, her illustrations her paintings her like sarcasm <laughs> It's just amazing. Um, I do. Amna, I love her work. Uh, Amna has the most beautiful black and white style. It's, it's so nice. Her work is one of the of the work that inspires me like every day. Um, who else? That's the thing. You start mentioning names. If you forget someone, you're just not so happy with yourself. Um, Yasmin as well. I do have a huge painting at the entrance of my house. Actually, the entrance of my house is just like like Sudanese paintings. Um, so Yasmin has amazing art, like the create, the idea, the execution, the size of it, um, the color scheme, it, like everything is just wonderful. Um, yeah, I'm gonna stop here because if I keep talking about Sudanese artists, I can spend the whole day. The main project that actually made me feel more uh, in love with ceramics is the Gonat project, which is inspired by um, the Gonat, you know, uh, the woman in Bir Birannu, like uh, when a habit, I switched to Sudanese, you know, so Al Ghun Al Habit, Ghun Al Banat, etc. The look of all of that, like the beat, everything is just so different, and just I, I just love these songs, and, and I've been listening to them since I was a child, and um, there is a huge source of inspiration because I love their songs. 
uh, through I included some other songs which are not Gonna Hobbit, just uh, like it's it became a mixture of Gonna Hobbit with uh, the Luca with a lot of songs, and I just didn't want to change the name, so I just kept the name Gonad. Uh, when you talk about inspiration, I'm inspired by also Ramiz women, the women who sing, Satata Shai, everybody. What is the one thing you know now about working women challenges you wish you had known earlier in your career? Oof, uh, this can. This can be like five hours. So, um, so the main thing about learning is that you need to like be make a lot of mistakes and be okay with them. And the main issue I felt is that I was not okay with making mistakes because I wanted to be right. Because when you're like now I'm 35, gonna be 36 in two months or less than two months. And say the 10 years ago to the 25 version of myself, I was just not willing to make mistakes. I just wanted to be right all of the time. Um, and it has to do also with being stubborn because I'm a very stubborn person, which everyone says it is it's a bad thing. But I think there are some good, um, like there are some good things and some bad things. So the good things is that because you're stubborn and you know that you all know what you're doing, you're gonna keep at it. Wherever that goal that you have, you're just gonna keep doing it every day, every day, every day until you reach it. So it helps me become persistent and to keep working every day, even if no one is saying well good job you know or even if i don't see results so this is what i like about being stubborn what i don't like is the same things that i keep doing the same thing same thing same thing even if it has proven not to work like i need to know the moment that i can go okay i've been persistent but this thing is not a good idea you know so i think the negative thing is that i was very stubborn that first i wouldn't listen to anybody else so that would block uh, feedback or uh, criticism yeah basically I just wish I would um, allow myself to make more mistakes I would allow myself to not take myself too seriously I feel like um, I this is one of my of my major things that I would take myself too seriously or I just want to make it already and there's no such thing you know like there's no thing like you never go like oh I made it um, I can go and take a nap it's something that is ongoing so I shouldn't have been focused on making it other than just going through the motions, learning what I can learn and just go into the next phase. So question number five, if you had to start from scratch knowing what you know now, what would you do differently? Okay, so to be honest right now I do feel like I'm starting from scratch because I did have something uh, strange that happened to me um, a couple of weeks ago. Other than the strange things that have been happening since, you know, beginning of 2020, but that's another um, video. So I'm starting from scratch because I know now I'm saying that I'm working on clay and this is the thing I'm doing now, but actually 19% of my work has been digital work and this is what most people who are familiar with me are familiar with my digital work maybe. Um, and also because it's been the thing that introduced me to new projects, new clients, new uh, connections, uh, other artists, other collaborators, and this is the thing that makes me enjoy digital work. So what happened is, is like two weeks ago, I lost all of my digital art, everything that I ever made. So I do work out of my iPad and all of my work is there and honestly I have no real explanation why I never packed, but I, I never backed it up even once. So um, probably should have done that in the 40 years that I've had this iPad. So I remember it was the morning of a huge deadline with an important client. And I was working on this deadline for the past month, working on all the illustrations. And I finally finished them the night before. I remember even the deadline was on Monday and I even didn't have any moment of rest on the weekend. Like the weekend, I didn't even work from bed or whatever. I just sat on the desk and worked throughout the day for two full days. And then I went to bed. Next morning, trying to write the email, trying to transfer the files or the illustrations. The iPad would just have the Apple logo and just wouldn't move. Long story short, I lost everything. So I didn't even have one, like everything, all my zines, all my illustrations, everything I ever made, and even my brainstorming sessions, everything. So I was not really, I was not happy, obviously. I was, I was not happy at all, especially that I had to redo the one month work in four days. But for a long time, especially for the last two years, uh, especially for the last year as well, is that I haven't been feeling 100% enthusiastic about my uh, my digital work. You know, even though there's the thing that like 90% of what I do or 90% of my work is digital actually. With time, I haven't been feeling 100% about it, especially when I got introduced to clay, because this is something that I instantly love and I just wanted to be doing it every day. 
and I realized that I don't feel the same about my digital work, or at least I don't feel the same about it anymore. But I didn't want to make a decision about it because it's a huge decision to, to make. And um, question number six, what are the recovery methods from 2020 and how did 2020 affect your willpower? Okay, so, um, okay, 2020 has been a tough year for everybody involved, uh, including myself. But um, I never thought I would ever say that I'm thankful for 2019. For me, generally and personally, was a very tough year. So to go through that and um, not trying to take a shortcut and just go through the process and the healing and the therapy and blah, 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 um, was very important to survive 2020 and to survive 2021 because so far, especially with losing all my work, I'm not like in this uh, beginning. Uh, of course, there were the tough moments just like everybody else, but um, and I didn't accept the whole thing until the end of the year because I'm very slow on the uptake. So December 2020 is when I finally accepted that um, I truly got into the isolation, like I started to actually enjoy it. Enjoy it to the point that I'm actually now nervous about the moment that we have to go back outside. So I'm an introvert, so that's why um, that's why also isolation is not such a huge challenge for me. How did 2020 affect your willpower? Um, I don't want to get too complicated, but I don't really believe in willpower. I don't believe, because willpower is, or there's nothing to believe it exists, but I don't try to think about it when I think about, like I feel like it has nothing to do with me. Because if I think of willpower, that, in, in, that, that implies that I'm thinking of myself as a lazy person who wouldn't do stuff and I need willpower to go somewhere or I need willpower to uh, to do that thing, you know? So it doesn't help me mentally to think of myself as someone who needs willpower. How do you motivate yourself and stay motivated during this? Um, it's basically one or more, more or less the same mentality is that um, so I was reading this book, The Myth of Motivation, which is basically uh, challenges this idea of what motivates us because the concept of motivation is that we always think that um, motivation comes, like I'm idle, like I'm in bed trying to convince myself to come here and work. And motivation is going to come out of nowhere and I'm going to suddenly feel the feel inspired to come and work. And then I'm going to come and work. So we think that motivation happens, uh, then we take action and then we see results. And this book simply tells you that no, this is, this is not what happens, is that you take action you're either motivated by action or by the results and this is how you keep motivated is that you see results so one of the tricks uh, is the pomodoro technique it's basically that you convince yourself that okay so to convince myself to come here or to work in general i just uh, tell myself okay i'm just i just have to work for 25 minutes i can do 25 minutes so i just set the timer 25 minutes and there are a lot of apps that do that and then usually when you made it for the 25 minutes you're already into it and you're enjoying yourself that's why i go back to you have to decide what makes you happy because if you the 25 minutes pass and you're still miserable that's probably not the thing that you need to be doing you know um anyhow that what works for me it might not work for you but that's how i stay motivated is that i know that motivation has nothing to do with it i need to get up do it and then i'm gonna feel good just like exercise question number eight what is the toughest decision you've had to make and how did it impact your life um these are very difficult questions. I would say coming to Canada or leaving to, uh, Sudan because I never thought that I would ever leave Sudan. I thought, I don't know, I, c I couldn't, I would always toy with the idea of leaving Sudan, but I never thought that has actually happened. Sudan has always been like, a, you know, when you're in love with someone, but they don't care about you. <laughs> This is always how, how I felt about Sudan, you know, I just feel like you were, I, I was in love with Sudan, they loved me back, what's happening. Um, and then it came the moment that I felt like, okay, I need to make the decision about it. To just do things without being told what you need to do or how you need to be or how you need to act or how you need to talk or whatever, you know, sometimes you just need this. And I just uh, decided to come here, which was a very tough decision. And I think I managed to make it out of ignorance because I only calculated until how can I leave Sudan and then did not calculate how I'm going to stay in Canada. When I came here I didn't know that I'm going to be having to work non-stop to be able to find a place to live, like all the things, you know, the struggles. If anyone moved by themselves somewhere, like not with their husband or their wife or their family, they moved by themselves, it's a huge thing because you don't have the safety blanket of your family or your friends or connections or whatever. Um, yeah, so that was really tough, uh, but I think I managed to make it, again, out of ignorance because if I knew the whole picture, if I knew that it's going to be years until I can feel a little bit settled, I probably would have chickened out. What was the second part of the question? How did it impact my life? It impacted everything in my life, even the fact that I'm sitting here doing art, the fact that, um, first, 
for until now I'm a little bit resistant to the word artist and being called artist because I'm like what does that even mean but having not to uh, justify what I do not having to lay if people want to call it art whatever fine but I guess uh, it changed me in the way that I start to give art much more importance and now I'm even having the audacity to think that one day I'm going to be doing art full time and that's something that I don't think um, the Inas in Sudan was going to be able to do that uh, simply because Sudan I felt like most of my energy was going through trying to justify what I do because Sudan we have a very narrow perspective of what art is and what art is not and basically art is only this little cube and everything else is not and you need to continue justifying yourself on what you do and people tell you this is not art this is not art but when you don't have to just like when you don't spend all this time and energy and um effort trying to explain yourself and just sit and do what you want what you really want to do without thinking oh how am i going to explain this mug to people why did i want to make this mug why is the thing looking like that why is it thin when i have to think of like imagine if i have to think about having to answer all these questions before I work, I'm never going to get to work. But if I do it, I'm like, well, this is how it looks because that's how I want it. That's it. Even the small things, even if I want to, uh, I know it's really cold outside, but if I want to put on a t-shirt and a uh, pair of jeans and walk out, you know, I don't have to think about what is the guy sitting with Sita Shah is going to think. What is, you know, I didn't, I don't have to think about that. And this freedom allowed me to really relax and be uh, be creative because you cannot be creative if you're not relaxed. Tell us about your proudest accomplishments. Okay, so this sounds a little bit self-congratulatory, like, oh, I'm so proud of myself, I did that. Um, and usually they're not what people think, like, uh, people usually answer the, uh, like, uh, the question by winning this and that, or uh, accomplishing this, this, or being published somewhere. Um, but for me, usually the, the proudest accomplishment is like the private accomplishments that I'm, I'm like I make myself. You know, not the things that people know about. Like usually the like winning the small struggles that I only know about. Like for example, if I feel like I cannot make it out of bed, making it out of bed is something. Uh, procrastinating on, on this video for like um, how many hours has been right now? Um, eight hours. I've been procrastinating this video for eight hours, but I ended up doing it. I feel like, okay, uh, at the end of the day, I'm gonna feel good that I actually recorded this video or that I finished uh, smoothing my clay, that I'm being distracted. I cannot talk and work at the same time. So yeah, my proudest accomplishments are the very small ones that um, having a bad day and then not deciding to waste the whole day sulking, but getting up and do something or try to change my mentality about it or uh, or maybe allowing myself to be upset and get and take a break instead of feeling guilty about it. So there are like accom personal accomplishments, honestly. The last question, a uh, message to the younger female generation who are just starting to emerge in the professional world. I'm just starting to emerge in the professional world. I'm saying my personal self because I'm not really, I don't like the idea of giving advice for people because uh, like advice and tips and all of that, I feel like it's kind of a shortcut to the process. Like you need to have your own process and you need to go through your own process. And uh, maybe something that I even do until now, especially when I was younger, is that I thought somebody has a secret formula and I need to find this person or I need to find a secret formula that's gonna help me. And I need to find the right way of doing things because there's right and wrong. And I was very uh, black and white about it. There's no black and white answer. There's no right or wrong answer. You just need to, fee to see the thing that works for you. You know, if uh, you like something that someone is doing, try it. Try it. You might like it. You might not like it. You might, you know. But for me, I try to decide the answer or the results before I go with with the process. Um, and I wish I didn't do that. So I would say the same to people. Basically, it's just trust your process. Trust what you're thinking. Um, whatever your the process is, is going to be your own process. Like you can never re duplicate somebody else's process. So you can learn from other people, but it can never replace these tips and whatever. They can never replace the actual thing that you have to do. And most of the time, you're going to learn from making a lot of mistakes. And this is the main thing that I think we're kind of scared of doing is to making mistakes because less and less people are willing to share their mistakes because everyone's trying to be perfect because of social media and all of that. So yeah, I'll just say just live the process you know just you know um do the thing that you feel like you need to do but work very 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 hard because whatever that shortcut that you're working like looking for believe me it's just going to take much less time 
for you to do the whole process then to look for the shortcut and then realize it's taking you nowhere and then coming back to do the process again so it's just easier to not do shortcuts and this is what i'm it's not advice i'm giving other people i'm basically advice giving myself is that um there are no real true shortcuts just like there's nothing really truly for free yeah so i have successfully answered the 10 questions uh, that were sent to me and now i'm actually going to focus on actually uh smoothing my clay um anyhow thank you for watching me um or listening to me rambling and um you know please excuse the fact that i didn't talk to anybody not saying that the camera is a person but i didn't really talk out loud for quite some time let alone answering uh you know life-changing questions so yeah thank you for watching this uh, segment and um, happy woman day I guess